Hey guys, Ryan from Spiker Workshop, and here is the assembly video for the new Cyber Blower, which is an attachment for the Cyber Cat. And this is approximately what your kit will look like. We got the sheet metal components, um, whether or not you buy the electronics, which I sell separately in case you want to change up your stuff. And then you got hardware, injection molded parts, and your kit will come with a bunch of electronics, even if you don't get the motors and stuff with it. And then, something to note right off the bat is that this blower, the impeller, spins at quite a high RPM. So it's, um, I got these, these warning labels about it, just so you know, just like any full-size snowblower, you gotta be careful where you aim the chute, in case something gets spit out, like a rock or something. And then also even be careful where you aim the uh, augers themselves because of the high speed impeller. Just something to be uh, cautious about. I skipped ahead and wrapped some of the pieces. This is an optional step. Just like when you watched the assembly video for the Cybercat. I'm not going to go over how I wrapped this because it's... I, I did like a tutorial in the other video. Uh, take a look at that one if you like forgot how to do the wrap. But it's the same exact uh, thing, just different shapes basically. And I'll show you. So really, the only difference is on the snowblower. There's a lot of surfaces that aren't closed up, like the snowcat kind of closed everything up. On the snowblower, there you have a lot of open surfaces. So the technique that I used for that is basically uh, wrap the vinyl up over the edge and then once you heat it up and stick it in place and it's all good to go then you take a knife and then trim trim like a nice line so you can see and then on some of these surfaces like where the snow like the snow will be coming up here I didn't wrap it around the corner here because the snow would have probably just caught on that so in this case, I just trimmed it flush with the edge. And then when it's all put together, you probably won't see that edge because, you know, the, the chute will be above it like that. And then you can see the chute. I did do this edge because it's not in the path of the snow. See how it's like behind? So some of the parts, or I'll just, I'll show you each one just so you can have an idea. Like on this piece, I didn't cover this edge because it will be screwed in between another piece. You can see how I did this here. Also skipped this edge because the snow will be going up. And then like the side plates, I didn't do... I did do the top one, but not the bottom two seams. Just kind of overlapped it a little bit. And then some of the smaller parts like these. And this one, I ran out of vinyl, so I had to overlay and cut up a couple little small pieces to fill in. But even these, um, I didn't overlay. Well, some of it I did. And then the top doesn't need to be, because there's a part that goes up here. And then the, uh, the main body piece. So I, I vinyled it into the corner there. See the shape of that? And then the top doesn't go up all the way, just like that. And then the inside, just a little bit of a uh, overlap. Yeah, so that's that's the wrap aspect of it. And just like the Cybercat, I'd recommend, even if you don't do a color, maybe look into clear wrapping it, just to try to prevent some of the um, wear, like scratches and stuff. This aluminum scratches really easily. But when you wrap it, it's a lot more durable. Then you can see all these components I did not wrap because they're either small or they're in places that aren't that visible. Here is a quick overview of some of the components that are in the kit. So there'll be a bag of electronics, some fuses, wires, and plugs, servo cables, 
Uh, the same light bars that are used on the CyberCat also fit on the Cyber Blower. And then on my website, for future orders, there'll be two color options. So it's talking about two separate sets of colored lenses. Similar to the CyberCat, when you select two different color options on my website, you get two complete sets of those lenses. So you can mix and match them at any time. Um, and then we got some servo covers, a little printed fuse holder that you can tape inside the cat, and then the injection molded parts. A lot of them are shared in between the cyber cat and the cyber blower, but there's like three new molds. So the augers, they have uh, on them, there's a molded letter for right and left, and it's on both sides. Just uh, to be aware of that. And then we got the hardware kit, and then some aluminum parts. These all have to be cleaned up. So you will need to file down some of these points, because I'm just taking them out of the panel without any other processing. So I'm going to drill out the parts. Note that some of these are injection molded parts that have to be drilled out using the chart and then also some of the printed parts too. For this step we're going to use this hardware to put together the main body panels. And it's super simple. You just uh, uh, first of all, skip the top hole. Don't do that one yet, but do all the ones going down the side and the bottom. Using this hardware and these pieces, we're going to put on the scraper bars and the uh, back chute cover or impeller cover. So it's a little different than my other kits. You have to do some countersinking and drilling. So you'll get a CNC cut bar like this, but you have to countersink the screw holes on your own. So get some kind of countersink bit to do that. So here's how this should look. So you see I got the scraper bar going through this beam with this part hanging off the back. See the, uh, the nut there? So it's kind of sticking off the back like that. You can almost use it as a stand. And then to do the scraper bars. So I can line them up now up against that edge. And then I'll take like a knife and look straight down the top and make like a line on each hole And then I'll come back and you can measure, but I, I, I always just eyeball it. It's pretty close. Just eyeball in the center of that. And then I'll drill and countersink those. We're using this hardware and these parts. Also, this hardware from the previous steps when we used uh, those hardware to put the panels together. So these get doubled up. There's two of them here. So take the screw with a washer, feed it through here. Another washer on the back. And then that black standoff, the three quarter inch. And then the wheel. And have the wheel face the aluminum part. And then we'll do another washer and a lock nut. And then we'll use this hardware to screw it onto the wall on both sides. And then as you can see, you can use this to adjust the ride height of the snowblower. Here's what those should look like when you got them done. So remember there's a right and left, kind of goes like that.
Next step, we will use this hardware. And these parts. So one plate goes on each side, on the outside like this. And then just temporarily use these bushings to help align uh, each side. And then I'm going to use those screws to screw in on the three holes. Forgot to mention, also put a number six washer in between here. We'll be using that same hardware that we've been using for most of these screws and these parts. Here I have them bolted in. So lead, lead the uh, screw in from the inside. So the head is on the inside. Oops, sorry. And the uh, nut is on the outside. So then we're going to take this and you can basically just bring it up by hand. It will follow the uh, curvature there. And then for now, we're not going to permanently connect it. But just to hold it in place, I'm going to put a screw on each side. So temporarily just have the tops put in. And then I'm going to put those same screws all the way up here. And if some of the holes don't line up that good, you can loosen this so you can kind of shift the plate around in here. Should be able to get them all to line up. Should look like this now with all the screws in. This next step is kind of a bunch of things at the same time. So I'll briefly explain it and then show you at the end again. So this part will get screwed on like so. So I have the back two screwed in, but before I screw in the sides, this piece, you have to bend. You can bend this by hand. But we're, we're going to line up these two holes and create a circle, basically. So I'm just very gently kind of bending it. Not all at once. So you just kind of a little bit at a time. And try to keep it equal. And then eventually you'll get it uh, into roughly like that shape. And then line up those holes like that. So since you can't really fit a screwdriver in there, you can just hold the, the head with your hand or your finger and then just use a wrench on the nut and it will go tight. We will be doing a very similar thing on the back. So I'm going to take these. So these were temporarily holding this white piece from going out because it's curved here. So I'm going to take them and flip them around. So I have those ready, and then I also formed this part by hand, just like I did the other one. And then I'm going to fit it around the screws. So I actually see it's a little bit too small of a curve, so I need to make it a little bit bigger. And then kind of uh, curve the end in more. I'll show you in a second here. So it's like a rounded part, and then it goes straight. So I have it ready to put a nut on, but there's still one more step before that. So this uh, tower part also goes on that same screw. And then there'll also be another screw on the bottom. On this hole, I'm having a hard time getting the screw through. Like these two panels are just misaligned a little bit from just all the different screws. So if you just run a drill bit, just that'll be enough to get the screw in there now. So there I have it all assembled now. And then if you look straight down, it should resemble somewhat of a circle. And you can close up those gaps uh, before you tighten those screws. Then to test the fit, take the chute and it should fit over it. If it hangs up a little bit in one spot, just take a pliers and bend it more into a round circle. So here you can see, I basically just took a pliers and bent it into more of a circle. And now it fits on there, no problem. So it should 
it will eventually float kind of in the middle so it should be able to spin freely like this so to put the light bar together we need these screws and these components so very similar to the cybercat these light bars you have to break them off and clip off these parts same with the small ones and then it will go like this with the black part first followed by the light and then the lens and then for the top it's basically the same thing so there's little grooves on the bottom of the plastic part which line it up in the hole and then put the the light bar and then screw this on the top and these have little nubs that go in there if they don't fit you might need to sand or file them down to get them to fit in there here's how the light bar should look once you get it all screwed together so you can see that we don't need to wire it up until after you screw it in because you can still get at the terminals and that's the next step so the electronics wiring diagram that comes with the kit the top half is for the light bar so you see where they are here um, it's kind of matched to this so the small trim light up here we need to connect that to this port with a small piece of wire and then we need to connect this to this one and then also one of these needs to be doubled up to the long run that goes to the plug this plug which then gets plugged into the cybercat and then same thing on this side just a short wire to connect those so here you can see i have the lights wired up so i joined them in like a y split when i went to the pad on that one and then you can see on each end so then using those uh, common screws we've been using for the sheet metal stuff and those two white parts now we're going to connect it up here so basically it goes on like this make sure none of the wires get pinched in here and then while you're screwing down these two here uh, this bar goes on top of it like this here's what it should look like once you get the light bar attached so see how I got the screws here and then also the wire so feed the wire out of the hole and it can be either side whichever one you put the wire on on the circuit boards and then there's two zip tie points so zip tie it here and then uh, towards the end of the video I'll show you how to run all the cables out the back to start assembling the impeller we're going to use this hardware so we will take one of the larger gears and put three screws like so and then there is a right and left to these but just make sure that the groove faces away from the gear and then so it will look like that from the outside and then put those black parts on here but uh, just note that the two grooves face each other and then the gear goes on this side here's what it should look like once you get it screwed together and then there are three impeller blades so if you notice there's a hole running alongside the groove you want to line up that hole with the groove on the blade and then they get pushed in like this and then put the other screw with a lock nut and here's the finished impeller so make sure to tighten these pretty tight because it's acting like a clamp to hold these in there and then also that groove that was in the blades will prevent them from coming off if you or if they happen to get loosened up 
So keep an eye on these in between using your snowblower. If they come loose, just make sure to keep them tight. To put the motor mounts in the snowblower, we need those same screws we've been using. And then we want to line up the bolt pattern with what's on the side of the impeller mount here. So this one will go on this side. The motor mount lines up with the holes in the wall. So we'll screw it together with the two holes here. So I have them loosely fit. Don't tighten them yet. You should be able to move them around. As you see, there is a lot of play in the motor mount and you'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So the next step then is the motors. So I skipped ahead a little bit and got the motors already ready to go. But if you look at the diagram here, to get the motors ready, you got to add or wire on uh, 18 inches of wire. And then also, super important, one, mi one motor gets the opposite polarity. So if you look here, uh, the positives on the motor. So I got a positive and then a negative on this one. That's because the motors are mounted like this. So one of them has to rotate the opposite direction. And then I also grounded a flat spot here because once we get to the pinion, the pinion will go on the shaft like this. So we want that hole to have a splat or a flat spot for the set screw. So using the motor screws, we will loosely connect the motors in here and refer to the diagram on which holes to use to put the motor in here because there's four different options depending on what motor you're using. So in this case I'll be using a six tooth pinion on the brushed motor. So I connected the motors and it will be different depending on what pin you're using, but this is the the pattern here which has it closer to this side because I'm using the six tooth in this example. So see how they're still loose so I can still adjust them. So to lock the motor mount in place we have to put the shaft in to make sure it lines up on the ends and we have this as an adjustment to get it to all line up. So using these parts and some of these plastic pieces. So take those bushings and put one on each side and then take a bearing that goes in here on each side. Um, you'll have to do it as you put it in. And then I'm going to feed the rod in and also at the same time these plastic bushings so here I'll just show you so on this end if you look up close these bushings they go a certain way they basically face the either the bearing or the flange putting in the impeller yet. We'll do that after we get the motor mount locked in place. So before I go over here, what we can do is so we're going to focus on just this one at first, so you'll do them one at a time. So have it loose on this end so it's not in there. So we're just going to align these two right now. So I have the bearings put in its mount like this. And then you can move this around the motor plate a little to try to get it to line up on this end. It should be pretty close. See how there's a lot of play? 
and see how when I adjust this end, this side moves. So I'll put this in place here. Keep this one out though for now. So there'll be a spot where the shaft turns super easily. You want to kind of go up and down and, and in and out and up and down. And see right here it's not as easy to spin. There'll be kind of like a sweet spot where it where it spins freely like that. So then when you get it nice you can screw down those two bolts and the motor and then once you got that screwed down, then you can align this mount to, to that mount. So here I have the mounts secured with those two screws and should be able to spin really easily. If it takes a lot of effort to spin this, you got to realign it because it's going to make the motor work too hard. But once you get it set up, we're going to take the shaft back out and then put uh, the Allen wrench in here to tighten the motors and then after that we're going to put our pinions on the motor so the end of the shaft should be flush with the face of the pinion forgot to mention this is the screw to use for the motor pinion see I got it there so I have all this stuff tightened now and see how the shaft is flush with the face of the gear on both sides. And then I got the set screws tight. So next thing is to install the impeller, which also uses some of the components from when we had the shaft in, as well as these gears now. So let me show you how to get this assembled. So one of these gears will face like this. And then like we had before, the bearing. And then to get the impeller in here, we have to put the other side in also. And then see the direction of the impeller? It should spin like this. So uh, this, this section here should face out. So it's spinning like this. You should be able to not see the screw as it's coming towards you. If it's like this, that's not right. It should be like that. So then... same on this side have this gear like this so then come back on this side and push this stuff back over there like that two of those inside these gears to lock it in place So while you're tightening these, um, kind of push outwards on those two gears so that you can't move the shaft back and forth. Like this should lock the shaft in place relative to the body. And then also, if you picked the right motor mount screw holes, everything should line up. You should be able to see, might be hard on camera, but you can see the pinion is meshing with that gear pretty nicely. There's just a little bit of play, which is what you want. One thing to note is if you, if your impeller blade comes close to hitting the frame, one thing you can do is loosen up some of these screws. Because see how this panel is sticking out just a little bit? You, if you loosen these up, you should be able to push the panel. You even probably have to loosen up some of these out here. But there should be just a little bit of play in all these panels 
to to set the clearance right. So the most important part on the snowblower is this deflector plate. This will keep uh, debris from flying up into the air where you're not aiming your chute. Anything that doesn't get thrown out the chute will get thrown out here. So this deflector plate will deflect it at least uh, down at a downward trajectory in front of the snowblower. So we're going to screw that on here and then adjust if you have to by bending this so it is like right right at the uh, at the impeller there basically. So I have the deflector installed and see how it's just a little bit far away so I'm going to push it down until it almost touches the blade maybe just a little bit up in case you go in reverse to try and uh, clear a stick or something but that way anything coming out of the blower will get either hit this plate or get thrown uh, just right back into the snow basically another thing to mention is if you go with a brushless setup and only run one motor because I, I bet one brushless motor is probably good enough for the torque needed. I included a cover plate so if you're only running one motor you can seal off one side. To cover the motor so at least not as much snow gets on top of the motor while you're running there are these motor cover plates so you'll screw it in from the outside or inside out and it should look like this when you get it installed on both sides. And it's worth mentioning at this point the snowblower is uh, really easily tipped. So my cat actually knocked it off of the table on me once. She was rubbing her cheek on this corner. And see how easily it rolls because of those wheels? So I'd recommend keeping an eye on it until we get farther in the build. Eventually we'll, able, we'll be able to lean it back like this on the mount, but for now I'd, I'd recommend just tipping it over. To start the augers, we'll take the blades and those standard screws we've been using. And I got two examples here, so you're going to make a total of four pieces of this. But there's a right and left, depending on how you lay the blade out. And then you will take the pieces and stretch them out into roughly the shape of an auger but again note there's a right and left it, it just depends on whether you place the part on the top or bottom in the hardware page there is a layout of where to space the augers and then there's a right and left to the auger so these are mixed in here there's uh, R and L for right and left the two end ones are the ones that we drilled a small hole in. So I have them all marked out to where they should be. So I'll show you the left side here. So starting with the one with a hole on it, and it's an L, then I'll find another L. And when I start this one, I'm going to go two hex spaces this way and then line it up on the next position. So if you look at it from the front and you spin it, see the, the angle of this one should line up with that one, if you see what I mean. If you imagine that there's an auger on there right now. It's the same on the right side, but you'll be turning it the other way instead of the way I just showed you. So you should have them like this. I got the right assemblies here and the left assemblies, two of each. And then it's a little tricky to get it to feed around here. But it will be like this. And then using a bunch of these screws, it's very similar to my old snowblowers, if you've ever done those before. Here I have two of them done, so right and left. So the right one, as you spin it towards you, should look like that. Same with the left one, should be the opposite then. And then a close-up. 
So it's a uh, washer and lock nut and washer and the screw there. And the screw head on the blade that's facing towards the center, if that makes sense. If it was like this, the snow would get caught there. So it's uh, important to pay attention to that. As the snow is here, it will just kind of scrape, scrape by that. So to fit the augers into the snowblower, you're going to need some more of those flange bearings and these parts. So I'll show you one, and then it's the same for all four. So flange bearing there and here. And then on the auger, put a black piece here. And then on this side, it's going to be one here. The gear will have this hub facing towards the auger like this. And then another one of these on the back side. So then to get it in here, I'll start on this end. And you can flex this panel. So I'll flex this panel out to fit that in there like that. So using this screw, we'll put a screw in on this end. And on the outside, I'm keeping that, see how that shaft? You want it like flush with the black part. And then squish all that together and then screw that in. So that will hold the, the front auger from moving now. So then come over here and then you'll want to pull this one tight because see how there's all this slop in it? You'll use this and you might have to rearrange these a little. See how they shifted? But right before you screw this in, you'll want to have it so it's like this. So there's just a little play still, but not as much. So the blower should look like this once you get all four augers in. We will be putting together similar to how it was in the Cybercat, if you remember. So put a bearing in this and then using five of these, screw it into this gear. So it should look like this. Then next take one of the M5 screws going through like this and then I'm going to put a lock nut and tighten it up to here but don't go too tight you want to leave a gap so it can still free spin should look like this when it's done so it spins super easily then we're going to take three washers so put three washers on and then to get it set up in here we want the augers to be matching so I'm going to put them facing backwards you want them to be aligned like this and then this should fit into the gear mesh there like that then on the outside of the screw that sticks out will do a washer and then the lock nut and when you do the other side make sure that all the augers are symmetrical because it will these gears will lock everything together so with both gears in the front part of the snowblower is done and ready to go so you can see it moves uh, gear driven now and one nice thing is uh, say you get like a rock jammed in the auger this wall is flexible enough that the augers will push itself and it will actually break loose of the gear mesh here and it will skip without damaging anything um, uh, some of my other YouTube videos I had an example of that I think was my first or second video on this blower. Next up we'll get the servos ready using these screws and these pieces. So this servo 
will go on here like this with the center of rotation centered with this part and it will use a washer on the top but you don't need a washer on the bottom and then this servo we have to cut off that little triangle so be super careful with a sharp exacto knife and trim off this part and it should go all the way down so it is flat like that do that to both sides so once you have those flattened then take this part like this from the back side so this part towards this part of the shape should look just like this and then we'll use a washer and the screw in from behind on this one with a nut on the front so they should look like this and then on this one that has this shape we're going to take one of those printed covers and go over it like that this one does not need a cover and this one should look like this next to get the chute ready the side that has two holes we're going to take the same screws we just used for those servos run it from the inside I'm going to tighten that down like that so like that should be ready to go next to prepare this part you're going to assemble it just as it's laid out here and I'll show you it in a second so I got that screwed on like this the gear goes on top with a fender washer and lock nut and right before you tighten it uh, just center the gear with that washer and then tighten it down really good because uh, you don't want this to spin afterwards so it should look like this when it's done and you shouldn't be able to turn the gear very easily it should be pretty locked in place so to get the chute ready the two top holes we're going to uh, using those same common sheet metal screws we've been using do that on both sides then we can take the chute or spout and kind of pull and get it on there like that to fit so it's kind of press fit on there and then here we can check if it hangs up just a little bit you'll want to manually just pull this out a little bit so it should be nice and free like that uh, there's probably a nice spot where it's probably about right there and then those other two parts that we got ready just a minute ago will also be attaching with those same screws so this one will be using the upper two holes and it kind of wraps around like this and this also you might need to flex outwards to get it to fit once you got that on then this one will go on these two holes just like that so it should look like that once you get it screwed on and all of the heads are on the inside to prevent uh, the snow getting hum hung up on anywhere so to set up the sh uh, spout linkage to the servo we're going to need the this uh, stuff so the servo horn we're going to want to cut off one of the sides that we don't need and then kind of like trim it up a little bit and then we're going to want to drill a hole using a 332nd and I went to the, the very last hole then use a screw and lock nut so it looks like this then the next step you're going to need one cybercat that's already configured from my previous videos 
on how to put the CyberCAD together. And then I'm also using two extension cables that come with the cyber blower just temporarily to plug in. So we're on the spout here. So the di wiring diagram here. So the spout is channel 5. So I got it plugged into slot 5 in the CyberCAT. And the fifth channel is this dial. So what we want to do is set the limits on it. So if I just loosely put the horn on here and just see which direction it's going. So I'm going to bring it all the way to the back like this and then bring this all the way up until it hits that. Take the horn back off and then that aluminum part I'm going to well put a nut on here first so it stays there. And then you might need to play around with different holes here or different holes on the servo horn to get the right amount. But you want the arm to be down this way because it's pulling it's pulling this back. See it will, when you push it it will go down or pulling it will go up. So let's try how about the middle one? And then I'll just loosely also put the nut on there to test it out. So see, it goes way too far down, but we'll edit that in the radio. So it could go a little bit more up. So I'm going to move the horn just like one little notch over on the servo. So it's a little too much now, but we can dial that in on the radio itself. So I'm going to screw, screw all this down. So got it screwed down. So you can see it goes too far on each side. So to fix that, we go into our radio settings, which is holding down uh, OK. So then go over to Function Setup, down to Endpoints, and then we're on Channel 5. So uh, OK will go down to the next one. And then depending on which direction you're going, it will change that arrow down here. So see how we're editing that side and now we're editing the other side. So put it all the way down where it's going too far and then start lowering that number. So you can play around with this to get it basically right when it starts to hit on here. So I'd say right about there. And then spin it to the opposite side. So it's way too far down. You can see the, the chute. So I'm going to have it reduce that number. And then it should bring it back up. See that? And it's personal preference wherever you want it to. I normally keep the top uh, horizontal. Because it doesn't really need to aim even lower than that. And then we can test it with the dial. So there's up and down. And now when you're ready to save it, you hold down cancel for some reason. So now that'll be saved into the radio. Next we will need this hardware. And these two aluminum parts. So on this, we'll be putting the bearing with the screw and a nut. So tighten that all the way down. So like that, but leave it loose so this can still spin. Then we're going to put both of these sandwiched together like that. And it will go in this slot with the other screw on top or nut. And then I'm going to tighten it loosely so you're still able to adjust it like this for our next step. So at last scene I meant to have this tag out there. These nuts are the M5, not the 632. So next step we'll be using the 632 one and a washer. And the part that we just got together. 
So with the gear facing down, we're going to put it on top of this post here with a washer and the lock nut. And then tighten that close, but also leave that loose so this can still spin. And then after you do that, you'll see how there's that groove there. So this can move a little bit. Once this is tight, you'll want to adjust the gear mesh here and then tighten this one down. So the gear mesh is uh, pretty solid here. So here's that together like that. So when you turn that gear, it should, it should mesh nicely there like that. So to get the servo ready for turning the chute, we have to put the horn on the gear. So first of all, we have to drill out these four holes on a round horn and then screw it on top like that. So it should look like this on the back side of that gear. Then I'm going to plug in this servo to channel 6 in the Cybercat and center the radio's dial so the servo is centered. So I have the dial centered so the servo is in its neutral position. Then I can connect the horn to it. So now to mount the servo into the snowblower there's two holes on the back of the tower here, so it will go like right here with those same sheet metal screws. Easy way to do this is feed in the screw with two fingers like this, then you can line it up and put the nuts on the back. Got it screwed in and I'm going to plug in one of those extension cables to this and for now I'll just run it straight down. Then next those same short uh, sheet metal screws but with washers this time and then I'm going to lower the whole chute assembly lining up this on the bottom and then this up here so you'll notice how this has uh, slots so you can adjust the the gear mesh right here and since we centered that servo you want to center the chute when you put it on here and you can also um, move this gear because it's not that tight or you can't move it you can use this to fine-tune it into the center so I got that screwed together and you can see that the mesh there isn't that much uh, play in there so it's a good setting and if on the bottom here if it's too low where it's kind of scraping the bottom you can pick the whole assembly up to uh, kind of flex this plate to get it to the height you need. So here I have the Cybercat back up here and I got the channels plugged in. So shoot is on channel 6 and the spout is on channel 5. So when you turn that dial then you can see it goes all the way to that side, but on this side, it doesn't reach all the way. And the rotation is uh, reversed from how I'm spinning this. So to fix all those things, if you uh, hold OK and go back into settings. So first we're going to reverse it. So hitting OK will cycle over to channel 6 and then reverse it. So now it's going to spin in the same direction. That I wanted to hold cancel to save it and then go down to endpoints and hit OK to go down to channel 6 so like this side is fine but this side we are going to bump up to see how we can bring it up to a hundred and twenty percent And then, of course, if it was anywhere in between there, you can use the other side to adjust that, just like we did to the uh, spout. And then hold cancel. Or hit, or hold cancel. There we go. So now that's all set up. 
All right, so that one could go down just a little lower, just to quick show you that again. Just hold OK. All right, go into settings, endpoints, channel 5. So make it go down a little more. So there we go. So to get the uh, safety stick, which is used to clear out any clogs, uh, there's this, a mount for it using this hardware here. So those screws should look like this. You feed it in from the inside, and then you space the lock nuts apart. So the groove here gets like a snug fit. So if you line it up like this, it should... You can adjust the the nut to have it hold this nicely there. That way, say you're out blowing and like a stick or something gets clogged in the chute, you can use this stick to help clear it out. Either uh, down the chute or in the front too. And then it can go right back there. Using this hardware, we're going to start to put together the lifting mechanism and the mount that connects to the Cybercat. So, and these aluminum parts. So on this part, we're going to take those screws, feeding them in the, these holes here, and then put a flange nut. So like that. And on the other side, so there's a right and left. Same with this part. So this will go on here like this. And this is the mechanism that will connect underneath the Cybercat. And then you can lock or unlock it. And then, so on the washers, there's a smooth side and a sharp side. You can see the rounded edges. Put the rounded edges towards this part so it can slide easier. The sharp part will try and grab on instead of letting it slide. And then tighten the screw down, but leave it somewhat loose, but also somewhat tight. You want it, you want to be able to use some pressure to latch and unlatch it, because you don't want it to come loose on its own. So here are those parts put together. So you can see here, so they slide with some resistance still. So next is to attach the servos, and like earlier, we need to cut off those little triangles here. So cut all four of these off, um, or two of them on each. So there I have those trimmed off. Then using the same or similar hardware that we used for all the other servos, I'm going to attach them, and they go like this. So from the back side, So you'll run the washers and screws from this side out with the nuts on the outside. And then um, on the other one here, this one faces outwards also, just like this. Here they are put together, so you can see how the screws and washers are on the back. And then on both, we will put that the last two printed servo covers on. So it should be like that. Next we'll connect these parts like this. Should look like this when it's done. And then using some more of those three quarter inch screws, we will come in on the back like this with a flange nut like that on both sides. Remember everything is mirrored here. And then that part we just did will go like this. Use a lock nut but don't fully tighten it. Leave it loose because it's going to act like a hinge. So to get the servo horns ready there are these aluminum parts and one of the holes is a little bit smaller than the other so we'll use that smaller hole 
and I already I clipped off the other horns and I drilled a hole you can see that drilled a hole in the third or second hole so then I'm going to screw this in the back so here I have the screw on there then we're going to do uh, two number four washers and then put this part with a lock nut and leave this loose also because it's another hinge component so it should be like this then we're going to take the same screws we used for these parts the three quarters and come in behind that hole with a flange nut and then uh, this will get mounted to that with a lock nut on the end. So it should look like this now. And before we can connect the horn, we have to dial in the servo. So I have the snowcat back here on the table. And I have the, there's a Y harness that's included in your kit. So plug both of the servos into that. And then looking on the diagram, we want the lifting servos on channel 3, so that's where I got them plugged in. And that's uh, this joystick that will set the height of the snowblower. So to get these set up, we want to put the stick in the middle. And then, for example, we'll do this side. So if you note, when I push the stick down, you want to watch which way that spins. So it went down this way. So I'm going to put it back to the center. And then with it in the center, line up the servo horn in the center. Just like that. So then you can see it will go up and down like that. Then I'll use the screw, screw that in. So then on the other side, we're going to do the same thing. So we'll put the stick centered. And then watch for which way it goes down when you push down. So it's on this side this time. So go back to the center again. And then we're going to put the servo horn on this side of the servo. Then we can see they should both, see how they both uh, lift up and down. So then I'll screw that together. So with that screw together, it should look like this now when you hit down. So imagine this will be connected to the snowcat. So up and down. And depending on how your blower is in the end, because all servos are a little different, you might have to come back in here and uh, either change the, the linkage length or you know what position it is on the servo there's all sorts of uh, different things you can tweak to get to get the height uh, how you like it next we have to attach this arm up here and the way we do that is a little bit different than what we've done to the other things uh, the screw gets uh, fed in first like this and then we have one washer, and then the stick, and then a lock nut. And then uh, leave it loose again, because that's a hinge. And then do the opposite to the other side. So here is the other side. Using this hardware, now we're going to attach the bracket that will then connect to the blower. And the way we do that is uh, one of these aluminum spacers go in between, which this uh, will get lined up in this groove using a washer on the outsides and then a flange nut on the back. So it should look like this once you get it connected on both sides. And then the next step is to connect it to the snowblower, the whole assembly. So there's these four holes, and we'll feed in screws from the front 
and then use the flange nuts here. So I'm going to connect both of those. So here I have it all screwed together on both sides. And at this point the blower is, uh, the build is done. There's still some wiring and some final details to do though. So for the wire management, uh, that Y harness cable that's going to the lifting servos can come up through here. And then I have this area here for zip ties. So on the inside, you can zip tie the wires to the wall like this. And even on these, the ones that are coming down from up above, I would recommend routing them uh, down even lower. So then you can capture them in a zip tie down here, if that makes sense. So like the side view would be uh, kind of like that, so there's some slack. Especially because when this one turns, you want to have enough slack in this cable. And then also make sure that it's not going to get uh, caught up anywhere. But it shouldn't, it's pretty far away from all the moving components. And then this one can be uh, zip tied like that. And then, well, before you zip tie anything, your kit will come with some cable wrap. But you can use this cable wrap to wrap these together and even go in there some and then maybe zip tie the cable wrap like on the, the inside here like this. And then also make sure you got enough slack on all this. So I would wait to zip tie any of this until we connect it and see how everything lines up. So to actually connect the snowblower to the Cybercat um, first, make sure that these latches are up, and then you these uh, these pins that are on the Cybercat, you drop the top in, and then the bottom will rotate in. It also helps if the the mount is elevated a little bit. So you, if you return the servos to neutral on both sides. So I'm going to get all the wires out of the way, kind of lift them up. And then so I'm lifting the blower up and dropping both sides on that pin and then spinning it down. And then that lever I pushed in once it was down. So you can see that side is locked now. And then do the same on the other side. So once you got both sides locked, um, if you have an issue getting them locked, you might need to go back in uh, on the Cybercat. Those two screws where there's that the pin that they sit on, there's a little bit of play in both pins. So you might have to loosen those screws and adjust your pins to get a nicer uh, fit. But once you got it locked, um, th now we can try to figure out something about the uh, cable management. So uh, the diagram here, it shows where to plug everything in. Uh, one thing we haven't done yet, which is the final thing, is wiring up the speed controllers. So like the diagram shows here, I'm going to join the wires into one plug. And then that one plug, uh, you see there's a choice here. So you can plug it into the front port or this middle port and it shows the uh, pros and cons of doing that for either one. Uh, it's really up to you and depending on what batteries you're running. In this specific cat I have uh, lithium packs so they have a higher discharge so I'm probably going to use this rear port but if you're using sealed lead acid batteries I'd probably recommend using the front port. You might trip the fuses more um, but you'll protect your batteries more kind of only use this back port if you have nicer batteries. And the difference is this port is only protected by a 30 amp fuse, whereas this all three of these are protected by two which are in parallel, so it's 60 amp fused. And then also don't forget about this, 
there's another Y harness that you'll use to connect both speed controllers together. You have to remove the red wires from both of these so that the BECs are not being shared between these or being sent back to the ES, uh, the CATS ESCs. So make sure you don't miss that. So I'm going to wire all that up and then uh, I'll use that cable wrap and zip ties to do some cable management here. So here I have the cord wrapped around and then zip tied in here with enough slack so when the chute spins the wire has enough uh, room and then one thing to note is where the wire enters the uh, lid underneath the lid there's a small little indent so you can't have too many things uh, bulked up in the center make sure it's it's flat so see how it's about it's like flat here you got a, a couple inches of room but it's got to be uh, flat so even if you have to separate the wires a little bit to get it through and then uh, according to the diagram here I got all the stuff hooked up to where it should be and note that the light plug plugs into this slot Make sure you never plug it into the slot that's on this side of the board, because that is uh, 12 volts. All the lights run on 5 volts, which is, uh, these 8 plugs are all 5 volts. So here's the lifting in action here. So there's kind of a lot of things to dial in at the same time now. So two of the things are the lifting height. So right now it lifts about an inch, which is pretty good. And then it goes down. You can hear it just touch the, the ground all the way down. So you can adjust all these things from a multiple different ways. Um, you can get a screwdriver right under the track here to adjust the bottom and the top of the bracket. So you can lift and lower the whole blower um, to trim the height of the scraper bar. Once you have the scraper bar set where you want, then you want to come in and trim the wheels because these can be trimmed separately. So you first trim the scraper bar to where you want it to hover, and then you trim the wheels down so that the wheels are riding on the ground. And there's, there's these two methods, and then also, like I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, back where we did the servo linkage here, you can adjust it even further. But it should be something like this, like right when you hear it hit the ground. So then in the machine, I have the two ESCs wired up, and they're sharing that one plug like I showed on the diagram. Uh, a couple things, make sure you change the um, jumpers on that. So it should be set to no reverse. And then also that other Y harness should have all of the red cables removed from here. I got it all set up so there really was no configuration for the blower motor uh, on the radio. So this stick right and left now will control the actual blower motor. So let me show you just a little bit. And before you test it too much, there's one thing you want to verify is first of all that both ESCs are turned on. And then there's a little light that will blink. So when I run the motor, you should see both of them blink. That way you know like both of the motors are being powered. Because it would not be good to have just one motor driving the other motor that's turned off. You know, make sure that they're always both on. And then the next thing to do is, um, is trim and set up some of the radio settings. So my personal preference is I want this way. I want that to be forwards. And it's reversed right now. So if you hold OK, 
and go down to reverse and it is channel 4 and then hole cancel so now this way is forwards so whenever it's powered on and the blower's on and everything's on it's like a dangerous power tool that's why I had those warnings on the cover page so I gotta remind everybody again about all these uh, safety hazards with this thing so just use common sense like don't mess with anything if it's powered on and even if you do mess with anything I'd recommend unplugging the power cables to the motor so like when I take it up to full speed here you can see you so yeah be very cautious working around this uh, don't work on it while it's plugged in like period so another thing is too, uh, even when it is powered, the radio, it has a return, but if somebody bumps the radio like this, you know, not good at all. So treat this radio very carefully because it's like armed when it's on. Um, this radio is very simple, so if you want, you can look at uh, purchasing... A more advanced radio that has like safety cutoff switches and things like that but this uh, doesn't really have the ability to mix anything like that so basically if the if any of the lights are on then treat it like it's you know very dangerous and then if if you hear like a horrible sound and the things not moving you probably forgot to wire one of the motors uh, opposite of the other and they're trying to spin counter clock or you know countering each other so that completes the assembly video of the cyber cat and the cyber blower and just a quick overview of like the actual operation um, so you would have driving on this joystick and then the two dials are the shoot elevation and rotation and they stay where you put them, which is nice. And then this up and down is lifting. So like you'll you will lift it up to like make a turn and and like get in position to start snow blowing. And then once you're in front of the snow, then you set it back down and start up the snow blower. So that sums up the build video for the cyber blower and cyber cat. So Please leave some comments and let me know if you have questions during your build. And these are available on my website for ordering. So thanks for watching.